Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Bridget Warrior here. Hope you guys having a awesome day. So happy Tuesday. And of course, I've got to ask you what time it is. It's time for God's people to start studying, start studying. And of course, we know that it's later than we think. Look at that. And uh, Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts. And we just need to open the door. See, there's no knob there. Open the door and let him in. Okay. So let us go ahead and bow our heads for prayer as we continue our second part in the child's diet. The kind of gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day, Father. Decrease me, Father, so that you can be increased today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. So our scripture reading is coming from Philippians 4, verses 13. And it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Isn't that good? God gave us the strength to do all things. So it should be no, we should not be saying, mm, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Okay? So that's Philippians 4.13. Okay, so uh, if you haven't had a chance to go and look at part one of the child's diet, it's very important so you can uh, continue with part two, okay? So let us uh, continue uh, with part two. It says, the parents should train the appetites of their children and should not permit the use of unwholesome food. But in the effort to regulate the diet, we should be careful not to err in Re requiring children to eat that which is distasteful or to eat more than is needed. Children have rights. They have preference. And when these preferences are reasonable, they should be respected. So, if your child doesn't like peas, don't give him the peas. If he likes the broccoli, give him the broccoli. If he likes a, a banana but doesn't like an apple, then, you know, that's what you give him based on uh, what she's, uh, Sister White is taking. And we we know we're still covering, no, where is my book? Of course, the Ministry of Healing, okay? The Ministry of Healing, okay? And we got here the Eight Laws of Health. Eight laws of health, right? So we need to make sure that we are following the principle of the eight laws of health. Okay? I had another form here, but... Okay, so let us continue. So, it says, Regularity is in eating should be carefully observed. Nothing should be eaten in between meals. What did I say? Nothing should be eaten in between meals. Nothing should be eaten in between meals. No candy or no sweets, nuts or fruits, or food of any kind. Irregularities in eating destroy the healthful tone of the digestive organ. And it does detriment to the health and cheerfulness. And when the children come to the table, they do not relish wholesome food. Their appetites crave that which is harmful for them. Mothers who gratify the desires of their children at the expense of health and happy tempered are sowing seeds of evil that will spring up and bear fruits. Self-indulgent grows with the growth of the little ones, and both mental and physical vigors are sacrificed. Mothers who do this work reap with bitterness the seed they have sown. They see their children grow up unfitted in mind and character to act, to act a noble and useful part in society or in the homes. The spiritual, the spirituality as well as the mental and physical power suffer under the influence of unhelpful food. The conscience becomes studified and the accessibility to good impression is impaired. While the children should be taught to control the appetite and to eat with preference to health, let it be made plain that they are denying themselves only that which could do them harm. 
they give up harmful things for something better okay so they give up something harmful for something better let the table be made inviting and attractive as if it is supplied with good things which God has so bountifully bestowed let meal time be cheerful happy time as we enjoy the gifts of God let us respond with grateful praise to the giver isn't that beautiful so if you look at it talking about the child's diet we cover this is like a two-part right so we child needs to be careful of what they're eating as well right they need to be careful well let us go into a little bit more a little bit more detail okay because some people might say well why why can't I they eat whatever they want to right so then they are going to be uh, intemperate. They're going to be out of control. There will be no self-denial. There's no control. Okay. So everything starts at infancy. And if a child cannot, um, if, if the mother cannot control the appetite of the child, every time the child cries, they give them something to eat or give them food. Because just for us, the same thing with us, my mothers, uh, our, our fathers, we should uh, have five to six hours between each meal, okay? And so your uh, digestive organ to digest the food that you gave it, right? And then, so I find a lot of people, even after they eat, they're chewing gum or they're doing this or doing that. You're giving a mixed message to your stomach when you start chewing gum because you say, hey, I'm bringing food, getting ready for food, which and that's a lie because you're just chewing gum, you're not eating, right? So be mindful of that. And if we cannot control our appetite, okay, there's a lot of stuff, other stuff within our lives we won't be able to control. So if we could conquer our appetite, you can con conquer anything okay because if you think about it from um from an appetite but let me go into more details here all right so this is taken from living eating to live this is from um child guidance okay it says built from the food we eat our bodies are built up from the food we eat there is a constant breakdown of the tissue of the body every movement of every organ involves waste and this waste is repaired from our food. Each organ of the body is required its share of nutrition. The brain must be supplied with its portion, the bones, the muscle, the nerves demands theirs. It is a wonderful process that transforms the food into blood and use this blood to build up the various part of the body. But this process is going on continually, supplying with lives and strength each nerve muscle and tissue and this is coming from i said child guidance right it's the same author of uh the ministry of healing Eller, on ellen g white okay and um she has another part here she says choose the best food in order to know what are the best food we must study God's original plan for man's diet. What is the original plan for man's diet? He who created man, who understand his need, appointed Adam his food. What was it? He had grains, he had fruits, he had nuts, he had veg uh, vegetables, constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. Okay, so since we know, okay, I just gave you uh, the diet. Okay, that God gave us, right? Fruits, grain, nuts, vegetables. Okay? Okay. I think well, I will go ahead at uh, one time, at uh, one point, and cover our uh, diet, diet and temperance. Okay? I think we need to go over that as well. And uh, here's another part. It says, uh, this part here is the same book, the same book, Child Guidance. Helpful living, a personal obligation. What we eat... And drink has an important bearing upon our lives and our character. And Christians should bring their habits of eating and drinking, drinking into conformity to the law of nature. We must sense our obligation to God in this matter. Obedience to the law of health should be made a matter of earnest study. For willing ignorance 
on this subject is sin. Each one should feel a personal obligation to carry out the law of helpful living. Mm. Okay, and then if somebody wants to go to, um, that was taken from Child Guidance, uh, page 392, paragraph 4. Okay, so it's, how, how critical is us to make sure that our kids are having the right diet, the right food. So we say it's supposed to be grain, nuts, food, uh, fruits, and vegetable, right? That is the that's the diet. So if we are get, feeding them the, the meat and stuff like that, and continue doing that, you are doing them a disservice, because as um, as history comes to a close, as this world comes to a close, we know that in the animal kingdom there are more diseases in the animal. Okay. If you look at, I believe it was Leviticus, um, I believe it was chapter 10 or 11, God talks about what we supposed to eat, right? He had to give us the clean and the unclean. But this is no time for God's people to be partaking of flesh food. Somebody might say, what is flesh food? Meat eating, meat eating. We should not be uh, eating, eating meat. Eliminating cheese from your diet, butter from your diet. All the dairy stuff, we should be eliminating that from our diet. Why? Because it, it numbs the senses of our mind. It, num it numbs our, our, our frontal lobe, okay? So we need to eliminate that. Maybe somebody might say, hey, Burdell, well, I love, love my meat. Well, just pray to God and ask, ask him to, to guide you. So maybe you can do a drastic change like, like, uh, like, like I have done. Maybe you can just do it. They eliminate it from each, maybe just once a day. Then, and then a couple of weeks later, you do it, and you just said, okay, I just maybe just once a week, right? So I mean, so you will have to make a decision. But as children of God, we should not be partaking of that, right? We need to have control of our appetite, because if we do not have control of our appetite, okay, that leads to other stuff, other things that we no longer we won't have controlled over so when you think about uh, a, ch a baby have no control they eat whenever they want to eat uh, any time of the day night or day they're eating right and then if then as they grow into um, young um, which was a teenager right then they go into other stuff because they were never trained how to to have self-control it goes into other stuff right uh, then it goes to talk about the self-love you know what i'm talking about uh, the masturbation and all that stuff then you go into they get to be manhood in their manhood or womanhood and then they go into you know all these crazy stuff right um perverted minds right they want what they want when they want it regardless of god says you know you should have this when you get married but every but they themselves see well everybody's doing it so why can't i and then they go into that right so as a man and a woman of god they go into that right but then when they get married it's still not controlled because they still have this desire for what you know for for more and more and more because they never really conquered their appetite when they were young, okay? And it goes on and they carry on. And unless they themselves go and ask God and, and to, to take, take over their life, and they start confessing their sin and ask the Lord, like I said, we can do all things through Christ. Unless they humble themselves to God and ask God to remove that desire from them, okay and that's why we have all these uh different things going on in the world in the churches um uh, men sleeping around women sleeping around the kids sleeping around and then you got all these other relationship men with men and women with men women okay as as time progresses and as we come closer to the to the close of earth history sin evil is going to increase and it's, it only, the only thing is it has to increase. Why? Because the Bible, God predicted in his word, he states that it's going to increase because, listen, sin is not going to exist after this, okay? So it has to play out. It has to play out. So God is looking for a people today, a man and a woman, that decide, hey, I want to come out of uh, the world, okay? I want to come out of the world. 
okay, I don't want to, or some people might be in other churches, they say, okay, I want to come out of Babylon. Remember, we seven-day Adventists, we're supposed to be proclaiming the, the, the three angels' message, warn, uh, warning our sisters and brothers to come out of those churches, those false churches. But we ourselves, even though um, we uh, state that we left Babylon, but we have Babylon in us, and we, bring, we brought them into the church. And so we have all those... Babylonian custom in the church. So God is telling us as well as Seventh-day Adventists to leave that stuff alone and to follow him. So they are in uh, rebellion. They are called Babylon. We are in apostasy. Seventh-day Adventist churches are in apostasy. Most of them are. So God is still calling us to come out, to come out, to come return to him, return to him, return to your first love. Because he has a work for us to do. And unless we have the name Seventh-day Adventist, but we do not have the power to do what God has called us to do, then you need to ask yourself, so why did I join the church? Why did I join a Seventh-day Adventist church? If not to proclaim the three angels' message, Revelation 14, okay? We need to start talking and telling our friends, warning them that they need to come out. And while they are coming out, we ourselves has to get our life right with God as well. So all of us need to move up to different levels, right? Move up to different levels. And as God give us more insight, as we study his word, his, his spirit of prophecy, as we study the word, as we study the Bible, God is calling us to come out, to come out, to stop, stop preaching one thing and living a, diff a different life, okay? So if we are preaching, say we are Christians, ambassadors for Christ, then we need to be living the life, okay? We cannot be saying we are Christian and then uh, sleeping around and drinking and partying and and, and smoking one marijuana and all, oh, because I got a pain. Hello, there's a lot of herbs out there that can ease your pain. Start with some turmeric, okay? There's different herbs that you can take for that, okay? So we're not even going to go there. That's a poor excuse. And Christians or people in general, we should not even be smoking because what you're doing, you're doing, you're destroying the body that God has given you. This is not your body. God has loaned you this body for you to, to, to be of service to him, okay? Be of service to him. So we are called to do a great work. And we cannot do a great work if we are sick, if we cannot even think right, if we cannot make decisions, if we're not even in self-control when it comes to our food, okay? And somebody will say, well, okay, is that this is very serious. Food, appetite is a very serious thing, my sister, my brother. So we need to get that into control. And once we get that in control, then we can go ahead and get ask the Holy Spirit, remember, we're not doing all this by ourselves. We have, the only person that brings us to repentance is the Holy Spirit humbles us. Then we go to God and uh, and ask to ask Him for forgiveness, and then Jesus covered us with His blood because He is the only person that died for our sin. So I'm just this is just an education. Some people don't know, so it's an education. It's not that I'm condemning anyone, but we all need to help each other along this Christian journey because if we if you are not standing now and state okay I'm still I'm gonna stand just before the national Sunday law happens I will stand you will not be able to stand because you have not had the oil the Holy Spirit that have been moving you from one level to the next level to the next level to make it to the final crisis that's about to happen on earth history so if you are not surrendering in the little things why would you think that you will be able to surrender in the bigger things, okay? It start with the small things, the small things, the small things. And once God reveals certain things to you, you need to let go, okay? Let go and let God. Give it to God. He's the only one. He is the only one that will take us through, okay? If you look at Re um, Revelation 14, let me go there. Revelation 14. Revelation 14, and it goes, it says, Here are the patience of the saints. Revelation 14, 12. Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keeps the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. 
that is the only way we're going to be able to stand, okay? It's by having the power of the Holy Spirit, by surrendering our life moment by moment. A day is too long. Moment by mo moment, surrendering our lives to God and allow Him to use us. So what does that mean? It means that I have to die daily. We have to die daily and allow Christ to reside in us. And then, he get, get, then we get the Holy Spirit power. Well, to do what? To just sit down and just do nothing and, and you know, get uh, have the breeze and somebody defending. No, 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 no. It's for us to go. We have a mission. Go tell. Go tell. Go warn. Okay? We got a work to do. It's not for us to just sit back and say, okay, I've got everything. I know. No, 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 no. We got to go and share. Share, share, share. And here's the song. This love that makes us happy this love that make us happy this love that soothes the way it helps us mind it makes us kind to others every day god is love we are his little children god is love we would be like him this love that make us happy this love that soothes the way it helps us mind it makes us kind to others every day this world is full of sorrows of sickness death and sin with loving hearts will do our part and try some souls to win God is love we are his little children God is love we would be like him this love that make us happy this love that soothe the way it help us mind it makes us kind to others every day and when this life is over and we are called above our song, song shall be eternally of Jesus and his love. God is love. We are his little children. God is love. We would be like him. This love that make us happy, this love that soothe the way, it help us mind, it makes us kind to others every day. Day. Isn't that beautiful? It's a beautiful song. Let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this song, Father, that we want to be like you, Father. And the only way we can be like you, Father, is that we surrender our lives each moment to thee. Father, we surrender our lives today, Father. Take these empty vessels, Father. Fill us up, Father, that we'll be uh, able to finish your work that you have called us to do. Bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, my sister, my brother, so tomorrow's topic is going to be the care of children in sickness. Okay, the care of children in sickness. So my sister, my brother, have a super awesome afternoon and make sure that you drink your water, right? Make sure you drink your water. So talk to you soon. Take care.